बसमीम् अल्लाम ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक मेजर इंट्रा एंड एक्स्ट्रा सेलर इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स सी व्हाट आर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ टुडेज डिस्कशन a brief introduction about uh, intra and extracellular uh, electrolytes then we will discuss the composition of human body what are the components of human body and then we will go for total body water and how it is distributed in the body and what what functions a water perform uh, in the body and how important uh, water is for human body then comes uh, major compartments of uh, fluids means the body fluids uh, where they are uh, in the body and then we will discuss the electrolytes and uh, their balance in the body how much important is the balance of these electrolytes and what are the functions of these electrolytes they perform in our body Uh, if this balance is disturbed then how the body functioning is affected then we will discuss these electrolytes one by one in detail first of all we will, we will discuss calcium then we will discuss sodium then potassium and chloride then phosphate and at the end bicarbonates and then uh, after all this discussion i will assign some assignments and all of you have to solve these and then are a few references so just let's start with introduction part about 56% of adult human body is made up of fluid although most of this fluid is inside the cells and is called intracellular fluid but about 1/3 is in the space outside the cell and that is called extracellular fluid so there are two types of fluids depending where it is present if it is present inside the cell it is intracellular if it present outside the cell it is extracellular fluid the extracellular fluid is in constant motion throughout the body it is not uh, you can say it is not uh, restricted to just one area of the body but it, it is in continuous motion that is why these liquids are of much importance they can carry one and the other uh, components from one place to the other place uh, so in the extracellular fluid uh, are the ions and the nutrients needed by the cells for the maintenance of the cellular life therefore all the cell lives in essentially the same environment the extracellular fluid for which reason the extracellular fluid is called internal environment of the body here is the composition of human body here you can see human body is made up of 62% of water 16% of protein 16% fats and minerals are just 6% and only 1% carbohydrates among different ions are the calcium uh, potassium that is 0.4% only sulfur 0.2% sodium 0.2% chlorine 0.2% magnesium 0.1% and other that are required in very minute quantities they are less than 1% then comes phosphorus that is around 1.2% calcium 1.5 nitrogen 3.2% hydrogen 9.5% carbon 18% and oxygen 65% so this is the whole composition of human body total body water and what are the functions of the body body here you can see water perform many you know, functions in the body so for example form saliva it's a part of saliva needed by the brain to ma manufacture hormones and uh, neurotransmitters keep uh, keep mucosal membrane moist regulate body temperature by sweating and respiration allow body cells to grow reproduce and survive 
act as a shock absorber for brain and spinal cord. Flush body waste mainly in urine form. Convert food to components needed for digestion and survival of human. Lubricate joints. What is the major component of most of the body parts helps deliver oxygen to the entire body. So you see how many functions water perform in our body. So here is uh, you can see the distribution of water in the body. Most of the water is is in the form of intracellular fluid. Around 63% of water is the part of intracellular fluid. Well. Uh, Extracellular that includes intestinal fluid, fluid, plasma, and other fluids. So there are two major water distribution: intracellular and extracellular. Here you see the extracellular fluid that is around 37% is mainly in the form of intestinal fluid, plasma, lymph, and transcellular fluids and while the intracellular fluid is that is around 63% is inside the cell Maintain, maintenance of composition of these fluids the body fluids are body solutions that are basically that contains organic as well as inorganic solutes the concentration balance of the various components is maintained in order for the cell and the tissue to have a consistent environment which is a requirement for proper functioning of the body organs. In order for the body to maintain this internal homeostasis, homeostasis means maintenance of static or constant condition in the internal environment. There are regulatory mechanisms which control pH, ionic balance, osmotic pressure, etc. in the cell. The volume and composition of the body fluids vary tremendously from one compartment to another and are maintained remarkably constant despite the vicissitude of daily life and the stress imposed by the diseases. So this is, uh, you can say, the responsibility of the body fluids to maintain the constant composition of the fluids uh, of the constituents. Major compartments for fluids are number one, as we discussed earlier, number one is intracellular compartment. The intracellular fluid, also known as cytosol, is all fluid contained inside the cell. It is the matrix in which cellular organelles are suspended. The cytosol and organelles together compose cytoplasm. The cell membranes are the outer barrier. In human, the intracellular compartments contain one average about on average about uh, 28 liters of fluid, and under ordinary uh, circumstances, remains in osmotic equilibrium. It contains moderate quantities of magnesium and sulfate ions. In the cell nucleus, the fluid component of the nucleoplasm is called the nucleosol. Intracellular fluid decrease in elderly. So with the age, these intracellular uh, fluids decreases. Now comes uh, extracellular compartment. In the intravascular, uh, that is around 5%, intestinal and uh, transcellular compartment, around 15%, comprises the extracellular compartment. Its extracellular fluid contains about one third of the total body water. Now comes uh, what is the composition of these body fluids? All the fluid either intracellular or it is extracellular contains electrolytes the electrolytes concentration varies in these fluids it is 45 to 50 percent of body weight in the intracellular fluid 
intestinal fluids make 12 to 15 percent and the plasma makes 4 to 5 percent of the body weight about 40 percent of intracellular fluid that is 4 liters around is dense connective tissue that is bone and cartilage and does not take part in quick exchange of electrolytes with the remaining body the rest of the intestinal fluid that is 6.6 .6 liters and plasma that is 3.5 liters comprises the active part of the extracellular fluid these fluid compartments are separated from each other by membranes which are permeable to water and many organic and inorganic solutes. Membranes are nearly impermeable to macro or molecules just like proteins and selectively permeable to certain oils like uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium. As a result, each of these fluid compartments has distinct solute pattern and the solute in each compartment is ionically balanced. For electroneutrality to exist in the extracellular fluid, the sum of the concentration of the cations must be equal to the sum of the concentration of the anions. Now comes extracellular fluids. We will discuss in detail. The extracellular fluid contains large amounts of sodium, chloride and bicarbonate time. Plus, there are some nutrients as well as, uh, as well present uh, in the cells such as oxygen, glucose, fatty acids and amino acids. While intracellular fluids contains large amounts of potassium, magnesium and phosphate ions. Now how these electrolytes or the concentration or the amounts of electrolytes are measured. So the measurement of electrolyte concentration is usually limited to sodium chlorine and bicarbonate only. The sum of the concentration of sodium and unmeasured cations that are calcium, magnesium and potassium equals the sum of the concentration of chloride and bicarbonates and unmeasured anions, phosphates, proteins, sulfates, derivatives of organic acids. So it means we can only measure sodium, chloride and Carbonates. The difference between the concentration of unmeasured cations and anions is known as an ionic gap. Variation in this gap is a helpful diagnostic indication to disorders of acid base balance. Difference in concentration of ions on different sides of the cell membrane results from metabolic activity of the cell. Amounts of potassium in the body determines the volume of intracellular fluid as the chief intracellular cation, while the amounts of sodium in the body determines the volume of extracellular fluid as the chief extracellular cation. In electrolyte uh, disturbance, what happens primary concern is the concentration of various ions and the in interrelation of positively and negatively charged ions with one another than the actual number. Uh, the electrolyte, electrolyte balance of uh, the body is maintained by regulation between the intake and the output of the water. So it is the water that plays an important role for the maintenance of the electrolyte balance in the body. Intake of water includes the fluid take, uh, taken orally and uh, the release of water during the oxidation and other metabolic processes in the body. While uh, elimination of water from the body by urine, expiration through lungs, perspiration and the feces. Excessive loss of water results in concentration of body fluids which causes rise in osmotic pressure as a result, what happens? Water moves out from the intracellular compartment to out, uh, outer uh, or extracellular compartment to maintain the osmotic pressure in extracellular fluid. This results in dehydration of the cell and loss of water above 20% may prove to be fatal. 
so let's start to discuss these electrolytes in detail and uh, first is first electrolyte is calcium about 99% of body calcium is found in bones and the remaining 1% is present in extracellular fluid compartment only 10% of the ingested calcium that we basically uh, you can see we eat or we take uh, with food is absorbed from the intestinal tract and the remainder is excreted with feces. The concentration of calcium in plasma averages about 9.4 milligrams per deciliter. The calcium level in plasma is regulated within narrow limits by parathyroid hormones. These are the hormones that control the calcium level in the body. The calcium in plasma is present in three forms. About 40% is combined with plasma proteins and is non-diffusible through the capillary membrane. While about 10% is combined with the other substances of plasma and intestinal fluid and is diffusible through the capillary membrane in such a manner that it is not ionized. The remaining 50% calcium present in plasma is diffusible uh, through the capillary membrane and ionized. The plasma and the intestinal fluid have a normal calcium ion concentration of about 1.2 millimole per liter, a level only half of the total plasma calcium concentration. Calcium is very important for blood clotting contraction of uh, various smooth muscles in cardiovascular system calcium is essential uh, for contraction coupling of in cardiac muscle as well as for the conduction of electric impulses in certain region of the heart calcium also plays an, a role in maintaining the integrity of mucosal membrane cell adhesion and function of the individual cell membrane as well. Hypercalcemia. What is this? When the level of calcium rises above normal, that is required uh, level of calcium, the nervous system is depressed and the reflux action of central nervous system can become sluggish. It also decreases the QT interval of the heart which can lead to cardiac arrhythmia. arrhythmia. Uh, what is QT? It is, you can see, basically um, interval between two heart beats. It causes constipation and lack of appetite and depresses contractility of the muscle wall of the gastrointestinal tract. The depressive effect begins to appear when blood calcium level rises above 12 mg per deciliter and beyond 17 mg per deciliter calcium phosphate crystals like uh, are likely to precipitate throughout the body so that is a very dangerous condition this situation occurs due to uh, hyperparathyroidism vitamin d deficiency cetiorrhea uh, fatty stools Crushing syndrome, that is hyperactive adrenal cortex, acute pancreatitis, and acute hypophosphatemia. So these are the reasons of uh, hypercalcemia that can uh, appear in human. Then changes in blood pH can influence the degree of calcium binding to plasma proteins as well. With acidiosis, less calcium is bounded to plasma proteins. When calcium ion concentration fall below normal, the excitability, excitability of uh, the nerve and muscle cell increases markedly. There are some signs and symptoms uh, when hypercalcemia is uh, the problem with somebody. Mild hypercalcemia may not result in any symptoms while more serious hypercalcemia can cause different symptoms for example excessive thirst and frequent urination 
too much calcium means that the kidney have to work harder. As a result, a person may ur urinate more often, leading to dehydration and increased thirst. Number two is stomach pain and digestive problems. Too much calcium can cause an upset stomach, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and constipation, bone pain, and muscular weakness. Hypercalcemia can cause the bone to release too much calcium, leaving them deficient in calcium. This abnormal bone activity can lead to pain and muscular weakness. Confusion, lethargy, and fatigue is also, uh, you can see, are the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia. Too much of calcium in the blood can affect the brain, causing these symptoms. Anxiety and depression. These are also symptoms of hypercalcemia that may also affect mental health. High blood pressure and abnormal heart rhythms. High levels of calcium can increase blood pressure and lead to electrical abnormalities that changes the heart's rhythm, adding strain. We can treat hypercalcemia. Uh, calcium deficiency is usually easy to treat. It typically involves adding more calcium to your diet. Do not self-treat by taking a lot of calcium supplements. Taking more than the recommended does, uh, does without your doctor's approval can lead to serious issues like kidney stones. So just consult your doctor if you feel you are suffering from hypercalcemia and they can suggest you a specific amount of calcium that you have to take. Commonly recommended calcium supplements include calcium carbonate which is the least expensive and has the most element calcium, elemental calcium. Calcium citrate, which is the most easily absorbed. Calcium phosphate, which is also easily absorbed and doesn't cause constipation. Another supplement is calcium so phosphate, yes. Calcium supplements are uh, available in liquid, tablet, and as well as chewable forms. People with mild hypercalcemia may not require treatment and level may return to normal uh, over time. The doctor will monitor calcium levels and the health of the kidneys as well. If calcium levels continue to rise or do not improve on their own, further testing will likely be recommended. For people with more uh, severe hypercalcemia, it is important to discover the cause. Doctor may offer treatments to help lower calcium levels and prevent complications. Possible treatments include intra, uh, intravenous fluids and medications such as um, calcitonin and uh, by this uh, phosphonates. If overactive parathyroid glands too much vitamin D or another health condition is causing hypercalcemia, the doctor will also treat these underlying conditions as well. A person with a non-cancerous growth on the parathyroid gland will require surgery to remove it. Another important electrolyte is sodium. The sodium and its associated anions, mainly chloride, accounts for more than 90% of solute in extracellular fluid compartment. The concentration of fluid is 142 mg uh, milli equivalents per liter in extracellular fluid and 10 milli equivalent uh, per liter in extracellular fluid. Plasma sodium is a reasonable indicator of plasma osmolarity under many conditions. When plasma sodium is reduced below normal level, a person is said to have hyponatremia. Uh, when uh, plas uh, plasma sodium is uh, elevated above normal levels, a person is said to have hypernatremia. So first we will discuss hyponatremia. 
Decreased plasma sodium concentration can result from loss of sodium chloride from the extracellular fluid. Conditions that cause hyponatremia uh, owing to loss of sodium chloride include excessive sweating, diarrhea, vomiting, overuse of uh, diuretic that inhibit kidney to uh, conserve sodium. Addison disease which results uh, from decreased secretion of hormone allosterone can be one of the cause of hypernatremia. There are some symptoms uh, of uh, this deficiency that include nausea and vomiting, headache, confusion, loss of energy, drowsiness and fatigue restlessness and irritability, muscular weakness, spams or cramps, coma. Then is uh, hypernatremia. Uh, As the name indicates, hyper means uh, excess amount or above some level. So it is the increase uh, levels of plasma sodium levels which also increase osmolarity and can be due to excessive water loss from extracellular fluid, secretions of sodium retaining hormone that is allosterone, excessive treatment with sodium salt. There are some signs that indicate this condition uh, that includes high thirst, flushed skin, dry mucous membrane, no urinary output, and tachycardia. It can be treated. Hypernatremia uh, can occur rapidly within 24 hours or develop more slowly over time. It can take more than 24 to 48 hours. The speed of onset will help your doctor to determine a treatment plan. All treatment is based on correcting the fluid and sodium balance in your body. Rapidly developing uh, hypernatremia will be uh, treated more aggressively than hypernatremia that develops more slowly. For mild cases, you may be able to treat the condition by increasing your fluid intake. For more severe cases, you will likely be uh, connected to an IV drip that's used to intravenously uh, supply fluid to your body. Your doctor will also monitor, your, uh, monitor you to see if uh, your sodium levels are improving and they may adjust your fluid concentration according to the situation. Potassium is also a major intracellular uh, cation present in a uh, concentration approximately 23 times higher than the concentration of uh, potassium present in extracellular fluid compartment. Extracellular uh, fluid uh, potassium concentration is normally precisely regulated at uh, 4.2 milli equivalent per liter. This is because many of the cell functions are sensitive to change in the extracellular fluid potassium concentration. Increase in potassium concentration can cause cardiac uh, arrhythmias and uh, uh, higher concentration can lead uh, to cardiac arrest by fibrillation. About 95% of uh, body potassium is contained in the cell, only 2% is extracellular fluid. Maintenance of potassium balance depends primarily on its uh, excretion by kidney because only 5 to 10% is excreted in feces. Both elevated and low levels of potassium can be fatal. Hypokalemia occurs due to high intake of potassium or in kidney damage. While uh, hyperkalemia due to vomiting, diarrhea, burns, diabetic coma, overuse of uh, thiazide, uh, diuretics, uh, or uh, the alkalosis. 
the some symptoms that show somebody is suffering from hypokalemia if your problem is temporary uh, temporary only slight uh, hypokalemic uh, one might not feel any symptom once potassium level falls below a certain level one might experience some of these symptoms and signs that are weakness fatigue muscular cramp or twitching constipation and uh, erythemia that is abnormal uh, heartbeat or rhythms hypokalemia can uh, affect kidneys as well they feel thirsty muscle problems during exercise in uh, severe cases muscle weakness can lead uh, to paralysis and possibly respiratory failure so you can see uh, these symptoms they show that it can be really dangerous but it is treatable so potassium enters the body through dietary intake in case of uh, hyperkalemia potassium rich foods are recommended to be included in the diet are fresh fruits bananas um, oranges strawberries kiwi etc uh, fresh vegetables uh, that include green foods mushrooms peas beets tomatoes meat either beef fish or turkey they can have juices orange prawn uh, apricot grapefruit they are helpful for treating hypo kalemia then comes hyperkalemia technically hyperkalemia means an abnormal elevated levels of potassium in the blood the normal potassium level in the blood is 3.5 to 5 uh, milli equivalent per liter potassium levels between 5.1 milli equivalent per liter to 6 milli equivalent per liter reflects mild type of hyperkalemia while the potassium levels of 6.1 milli equivalent per liter to 7 milli equivalent per liter are moderate hyperkalemia and the levels above 7 milli equivalent per liter are severe hyperkalemia hyperkalemia is uh, a common uh, diagnosis fortunately most patients who are diagnosed have mild uh, hyperkalemia which is usually well tolerated However, any condition causing even mild hyperkalemia should be treated to prevent uh, progression into more severe conditions. Extremely high levels of potassium in the blood uh, can lead to cardiac arrest and finally to death. When not recognized and not treated properly, severe hyperkalemia results in a high mortality rate. Some signs if somebody is suffering from this condition or uh, sometimes patient with uh, this condition report bad symptoms including uh, nausea fatigue muscular uh, weakness or uh, tingling uh, sensations more serious symptoms of hyperkalemia includes uh, slow heartbeat and weak pulses severe hyperkalemia can result in fatal cardiac uh, stent still, still that is heart stoppage it can be treated that include following measures either singly or in combination uh, either singly or in combination a diet low in potassium for mild cases discontinue medications that increase blood potassium level intravenous administration of glucose and insulin which promotes movement of potassium from extracellular space back into the cells and uh, intravenous calcium to temporarily protect the heart and muscles from the effects of hyperkalemia sodium bicarbonate administration to uh, counteract Uh, acidosis and to promote movement of potassium uh, from the extracellular space back into the cells chloride 
is uh, also a major extracellular enzyme. It is principally responsible for maintaining uh, proper hydration, osmotic pressure, and normal cation anion balance in vascular and intestinal compartments. The concentration of chloride is uh, around 1 of 3 milli equivalent per liter in extracellular fluid and 4 milli equivalent per liter in intracellular fluid. Decreased chloride concentration can be resulted uh, as a, can be the result of salt losing uh, nephritis leading to lack of uh, tubular reabsorption of chlorine metabolic uh, acidosis such as found in diabetes mellitus renal failure and uh, prolonged vomitings Increased concentration of chlorine may be uh, due to dehydration, decrease in renal blood flow found with uh, congestive heart failure or excessive chloride up uptake. Hyperchloremia The symptoms are fluid loss, dehydration, weakness or fatigue, difficult in, difficulty in breathing, diarrhea or vomiting caused by fluid loss. Hyperchloremia can also frequently accompany hyponatremia, uh, a low amount of sodium in the blood. It can be treated. Intravenous fluids such as normal cell line solution restore electrolytes to normal levels. If hypochloremia is mild, then it is sometimes be corrected by an adjustment of diet. This could be uh, as simple as uh, consuming more sodium chloride, that is uh, the table salt we commonly use in our food preparation. Then come another analyte that is phosphate anionine. Phosphate is principally anion uh, of intracellular fluid compartment. Inorganic phosphate in the plasma is mainly in two forms, that is HPO4 minus 2 and H2PO4 minus 1. Concentration of uh, uh, HPO4 minus 2 is around 1.05 millimole per liter and the concentration of H2PO4 minus is around 0.26 millimole per liter. When the total quantity of these phosphate ion in, in extracellular fluid rises so does the concentration of each of these ions. When pH of the extracellular fluid become more acidic, there is relative increase in concentration of uh, H2PO4 and decrease in concentration of uh, HPO4 and vice versa. Phosphate is essential for proper metabolism of calcium, normal bone and growth development. Both these ions make an important buffer system for the body. Hypophosphatemia Hypophosphatemia is an abnormally low levels of phosphate in the blood. Phosphate is an electrolyte that helps your body with energy production and nerve function. Phosphate also helps build strong bone and teeth. You get phosphate from food like milk, egg and meat. Most of the phosphate in your body is housed in your bones. A much smaller amount of uh, this phosphate is found inside your cell. There are two types of uh, hypophosphatemia. Uh, uh, Acute, which comes uh, comes on quickly and chronic which develop over time there are some sim some symptoms that show that uh, you are uh, having less levels of phosphates that includes muscular weakness fatigue bone pain bone fractures appetite loss irritability numbness confusion slow growth and shorter than normal height in children to decay or late baby teeth teething it can be treated 
means it is treatable low levels of phosphate can be treated by adding more phosphate into diet milk and other diet, dairy uh, food are good source of phosphate or phosphate supplements if vitamin d levels are low it is needed to increase intake of this vitamin because it helps in the absorption of phosphates if uh, hypophosphatemia is uh, severe there is need to get high dose of phosphate through a vein people with uh, the uh, family problems uh, will need uh, to take both phosphate and vitamin d supplements to protect their bones then there is a condition when you have uh, uh, high levels of phosphate that is called hyperphosphatemia that you have high levels of uh, phosphate in blood in larger than normal amounts phosphate can uh, cause bone and muscle problems and increase risk of heart attacks and strokes a high phosphate level is often a sign of kidney damage it's more common in people with uh, chronic kidney diseases especially in those with end stage kidney diseases some symptoms uh, of this uh, condition that includes muscular cramp or spasms numbness and uh, tingling around the mouth bone and joint pain weak bones rashes and itchy skin it is also treatable if one's kidney are damaged high blood uh, phosphate level can be lowered in 3 weeks reduce the amount of phosphate in your diet remove extra phosphate with dialysis lower the amount of phosphate uh, your intestine absorb using medication first limit foods uh, that are high in phosphate such as milk red meat packed meal packaged meat frozen meals snack uh, products processed cheese additives and preservatives breads etc it's more important to maintain a diet of healthy foods that balance protein with phosphorus these includes chicken and other types of poultry fish nuts meats and eggs in addition to the diet uh, and uh, dialysis one probably need medication to help body remove excess phosphate a few drugs help reduce the amount of phosphate your intestine absorb from food you eat these include calcium based phosphate binders and uh, uh, some uh, sebalamer uh, hydrochloride and uh, sebalamer uh, carbonates another important electrolyte that is an anion is bicarbonate bicarbonate is the second most prevalent anion in extracellular fluid compartment along with carbonic acid it acts as body's most important buffer system each day kidney filter about 4320 milli equivalents of bicarbonate and under normal conditions all of this is reabsorbed from the tubule thereby conserving the primary buffer system of the extracellular fluid when there is reduction in the extracellular fluid hydrogen ion concentration that is uh, alkalolysis the kidneys fail to reabsorb all the filtered bicarbonate thereby increasing the excretion of bicarbonate because bicarbonate ion normally buffer hydrogen in the extracellular fluid this loss of bicarbonate is a good as uh, adding a hydrogen ion to the extracellular fluid therefore in alkalo uh, alkalosis uh, the removal of bicarbonate ion raises the extracellular fluid, uh, fluid hydrogen ion concentration back towards normal in acidosis uh, the kidneys do not excrete the bicarbonate in urine but reabsorb all the filtered bicarbonates and produce new bicarbonate which is added back to the extracellular fluid this reduces the extracellular fluid hydrogen ion concentration back towards normal so this was all about uh, the body fluids
and the electrolytes and their body functions, their deficiency, their treatments, signs and symptoms of electrolytes. Now students are assigned a uh, uh, few assignments to do. Number one is just go through this lecture and write down major electrolytes which are required for proper functioning of human body. And then you have to write down importance of electrolytes, how they affect the health, if they are found in excess or uh, if the body is deficient for it. You have to look at each of the electrolyte and you have to write all these details for each of the electrolyte. So have a good day.